Hello everybody and welcome to SpyPy Gaming TV. Today we're going to be looking at update 8.1.4 to the PTR. This is the final PTS patch before the Lost Steps update 35 that will launch on August 22nd. During this week we will be testing some tech support with the Battlegrounds as well as some combat changes. Uh, the size of this patch is approximately 158 megabytes, so really nothing too big. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over some of the bug fixes and stuff like that and be looking at specifically what we're going to be getting in the patch. Now, I will say, if you're looking at this, you may be confused as to some of the combat changes that are coming in that there are uh, being referenced to in this video. If you are, make sure to go back and check out our other videos on the channel about PTS, uh, or the PTS and Update 35 that is coming out. Uh, the PTS has been in a continual state of kind of growth right now, where it's kind of difficult to keep up with it in one, you know, solid video. It's definitely something that's spread across for quite a while, as well as there's been some conflict between really what players want and what Zoss is looking at during this patch. So we're going to jump in right now and say that what we're seeing here is a Battleground new feature coming into the game. Firstly, it's going to be Battlegrounds are going to be on a rotation. So Domination, Deathmatch, Capture the Relic, Chaos Ball, and, uh, you know, Crazy Kings. These are going to be queued once per day instead of in random queue. Now, this is cur currently going into testing, which means that this may change, and hopefully it does, because I feel like Zoss has a better time when they just leave PvP alone. Um, PvP is kind of in a good state. I think that the last changes they made were a little bit of a mess. I think that they're probably better off doing it this way, where they just keep it as it is, and don't really go too far with it. You know, I think that trying to add in new systems to PvP is not necessarily what we what I would want. What I want is probably more battlegrounds, more places to go, more things to do. I'm gonna go ahead and clear up here my two tabs that I have open because I don't want to know if anyone has anything to say to me right now. Now with this whole thing we are gonna get some new battleground uh, well, uh, images, backsplashes, essentially. So that will be interesting to see. I wonder what their picture for Deathmatch or Capture the Relic, as well as whenever you open up your game, the announcement title, the bottom left on the character select, will actually tell you which battleground is active that day. So I, I kind of see what they're doing here. I think that this may get people to log on certain days more than others. I don't necessarily see this as a healthy thing for the game, but we'll see how it kind of comes out as it, you know, unfurls onto the PTS. But this is coming out August 22nd, so really there's not much left of uh, time for testing, which we've had plenty of, but I'm not quite sold on a lot of these changes yet. Um, so... Here we've had some changes specifically going into exploration and itemization. I will say real quickly that um, essentially all these quests within High Isle were not giving properly scaled items. And because of that, they've had to go in and fix them. That's a whole lot of quests. So, I mean, if you did them before, uh, you're kind of screwed. You're just going to have to recraft them, I guess. But nonetheless, I mean, it, there's a reason now to go back and do them again, I guess, if you particularly enjoyed the campaign of it. Now, going down here to combat and abilities, uh, the general tab here is that raid target trial dummies will be essentially giving elemental catalyst on top of every other buff that it gives you. So now, whenever you hit a trial dummy, you're not only going to be using one uh, a slew of buffs, but now as well as a set will be active, and if you are wearing that set, you will also then essentially double up on the dot because it is a automatic application to your stats, whereas beforehand normally was not. So 
we're going to see a little bit of interaction with that. If you don't run with elemental catalysts in your raid team, you're going to have to differentiate that damage. But I think that the majority of people who are going into a raid trial dummy <clears throat> or going to hit a raid trial dummy should be focused on raid trial performance. So I think that that's not necessarily a bad thing. When it comes to, you know, you're going to have these buffs in a group. You're not going to have these buffs solo. Maybe that'll be another reason to kind of flag what is, you know, a trial dummy parse as your damage. Because it's oftentimes not your damage when in reality. Now, going forward, we're actually seeing some changes with the Dragon Knight. Ardent Flame, uh, the Lava Whip. Molten Whip Morph is going to have its duration increased up to 15 seconds. This is supposed to be kind of one of their overlapping changes with damage over time effects. I think that this is not necessarily a bad change. I just think that we're going to have to see how it really works out. Me personally, like I feel like the Warden class got gutted a little bit. Um... And I definitely see that kind of resonate out into the community, especially some other wardens who are in the stamina side are not very happy with what's going on here. So with the changes to dots, if they're going to change the majority of dots, they have to change all of them or, a, you know, a, a broad sweeping amount. So seeing that come in, you know, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it. I know my class will be changed, uh, which sucks because I had planned to make a warden build guide and didn't get around to it before this and now my build is essentially out the window it's a real disappointment to me but i think that the increase of durations is it's going to be mostly fine and i'll get into why here in just a moment further down on the patch notes so next up is the night blade so in pale this morph will and now increase the execute scaling up to 330%, up from 300%. So, eh, you're not really getting much here. Um, overall, you know, it's not a huge bonus to everything you're doing. It's a, I believe, 10% net gain overall when it comes to output throughout. I don't see this necessarily being... Uh, make or break for anyone who is on the fence on which one to use. I, I use this on my healer in the out out in the world to kind of uh, you know kill things a little bit faster. As my nightblade healer sometimes takes a little bit to kill things, and I mean it's great for that. So I definitely don't see a problem with this going up, but I do want to point out that now um twisting path the damage morph for your major expedition is a, gonna do 50 percent more damage to help it stand out a bit more i i'm not quite sure about this until we get down here where actually concealed weapon increases your damage done by 10 percent for five seconds after leaving stealth or invisibility or when major expedition ends instead of giving you 300 weapon or spell damage for 15 seconds. So, necessarily saying that this right here, uh, this doesn't make it stand out anymore doing 50% more damage, but it does make it more uh, stand out more if you are willing to also use things like Concealed Weapon. So, there's a bonus there. There's a little bit of um, systems interlaying there. I think that this could be definitely a good a good combination together really because night blades have that speed that a lot of classes don't have uh going forward though as well, well actually going backwards is that surprise attack the morph is uh, a guaranteed critical strike and um well guys i'm sorry you know in pvp uh they decided to let everyone else have fun other than just night blades so this can only now occur every four seconds to Prevented from adding too much sustained burst. Honestly, eh, I don't see this being a huge issue for me and my play style. And I, I do have a PvP Nightblade set up for this. And I use Surprise Attack. And I don't see this being a big thing for me. I, th I think I'll be fine overall. So in PvP, this is fine. In PvE, I, I mean, really, you're just going to be using Concealed Weapon now. 
I think, just for the extra damage. Now, Dark Cloak has been changed in a massive way. Um, the morph now heals for max health per tick rather than missing health. It also reduces the base healing by approximately 42%. And the morph has an added functionality where the heal over time is increased by 150% when not moving. I think this is actually a good change. I've had some time to kind of switch this around in my mind. I like this. I think that this will add some unique playstyle to the class. I do feel like we are missing a little bit whenever the missing health part of it kind of leaves. Uh, some class fantasy maybe is kind of a, a little bit, but really, really when we think about it in a long term, this is a tank morph. This is a thing that your tanks are going to be taking. I take this on my healer because I'm essentially an off tank, but I think that this is fine. I don't see this being a big issue, and honestly, standing still isn't something you're going to be doing a whole lot, but getting that extra benefit from it, you know, that's a that's 150% more, ex or 150% uh, more healing over time from it. I think that is, I mean, honestly, it's kind of worth it. So, going forward, this is a great time to be playing a Sorcerer. This is why I'm actually planning to play Sorcerer in the upcoming patch. Um, Crystal Shard, The it, it will now increase the damage of the second hit from the ability uh, by 45% of the hit's damage uh, up from 30%. So, you're going to get 15% more damage on your second shot from Crystal Weapon. I mean, I... Alright, that just that works perfectly for the build that I have set up. And then Daedric Curse now will actually get a 25% buff for your pet's damage. So you will have a 45% damage increase with a Daedric Prey active on a target from your pets. I think this is going to be ridiculous, honestly. This is probably the best time to play a Sorcerer right now, especially with the changes coming in to light and heavy attacks. Templar's Dawn Wrath, Radiant Destruction, has been increased its damage by about 23%. Uh, nothing really there for me to go off of, but nonetheless, uh, we're getting down to what was my main for so many years. Um, and is no longer a Screaming Cliff Racer, okay? Uh, increase the bonus uh, spell and weapon damage when hitting off-balance targets by up to 300 from 200. So that's good. That sounds great. Uh, Arctic Wind is now changed again. Arctic Blast, specifically the morph, and as well as impaling shards so arctic blast now increases the chance of applying a status effect with this morph by up to 15 percent up from one percent per tick yeah all right all right all right guys i think that's probably the best thing we're gonna get out of this but you're gonna have to use a destro staff now because Really, this is where it comes in. Uh, Impaling Shards. This morph now deals 30% more damage if you cast it with a Destro Staff equipped to help Magicka Focus Wardens uh, get some extra sustain. I... I don't know. I don't like that. I don't like that Destro Staffs are now locked. Or not really locked, but necessarily uh, enforced onto the hands of Wardens who want to use this kind of ability... But I don't see it being too big of a thing. If you're really, really too, if you're worried about it, I think go mana. I, I think that's really your best bet currently for a wardens is going mana, and that's what I plan to do with my warden. I'm gonna strip him down, uh, turn him mana because I I don't see a place for me in stamina warden anymore. But Going ahead, uh, going ahead, Carve now has a 32 second timer up from 30 seconds. That's okay. Um, Howl of Agony for werewolves. Uh, it works now again. Uh, now, Vigor. <clears throat> Vigor has been changed in a way that is fantastic. Okay. It uh, reverts the healing reductions made. It now grants minor resolve instead of major. And that's okay. That's okay. I like this. I don't understand what they're saying about harming class identity and importance to run other sources of this buff. I think that 
minor resolve is is kind of really where it's at for most people unless you are a healer so uh, yeah it, it works as it should and i don't see a problem with vigor going forward i think that reducing the heal you get from it on the back end so you can't spam it as much yeah i think that's probably where it's going to where it's going to sit for a while and it likely is probably at a better rate like at a better state there you're probably going to get more up close healing you're going to get stronger heals but you're just not going to get them in such a rapid succession as you would before now or as you're not going to get as much out of really spamming it is what i want to get into that's really what i'm trying to say is you're not going to get as much out of spamming it as you would just hitting it and maybe you know, hitting it twice if you're really hurt uh, instead of kind of going boom, 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 as so many of us kind of do from a day to day, including myself, whenever you kind of get into a panic situation, you're just like, hit it, make sure I'm okay. Now, crushing wall has changed. Uh, this right here, I think, is one of those accessibility things, but that's maybe that's me being a little bit toxic. It's Wall of Elements is no longer going to increase your light and heavy attack damage, but instead increases the damage of your Wall of Elements. Crushing Wall was a unique staff. I just recently started to see the value in it, and now it's gone. And that hurts because I definitely think I prefer the old version. The, like it actually required more skill from the player, I feel like. Um, and on the developer comment, it also says, We've decided to remove the more intense skill interaction for this set to be closer in power and requirements to other Maelstrom sets. I don't think a staff is the same as a two-hander. So I really don't see the problem with them being interacting different like that. Now, Merciless Charge is going to have its damage reduced by 32%. However, you are going to get an extra 3 seconds on its duration. So if you're running Stampede, that's even more timer for the bleed that comes off of this. I see this as a net positive instead of anything else. This is absolutely better for us, I think. Um... I say I think. I want to be very clear. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure this is going to turn out in a better way than we think. As well as Thunderous Volley increasing the ramping damage uh, per stack by 190, uh, up to 191 from 143. I don't see a problem with that either. Like, necessarily. I think what happened here, you're going to you see a lot of these buffs and damage. And a lot of these uh, trying to remove skill barriers. I think what happened is that they kind of nerfed the damage a little too much, and now they're trying to pull back, and we're going to see that when we run down to uh, just a little bit lower here. But, oh, actually, it is uh, up here. Here we go. No, 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 no. Actually, it's not. So, I'll just go ahead and say it. Here it is. Oh, uh, reduces the health of all bosses in veteran difficulty. Yes. So that's what I'm getting at here is I don't think we're going to have any issues um, when it comes to damage output, really. I think everything's going to be kind of scaled to the same rate, just in a very different way. Uh, Powerful Assault, however, is going up 5 seconds in duration from 10 seconds now to 15, as well as increasing its meters to range uh, 2 meters up to 12 meters. I think that's fine. Uh, the set's I mean, the set's just really powerful, so going ahead and putting that on there is great. Oh, by the way, Oaken Soul is getting in power in the next patch, and it's going to be an 80% buff, not a 40% buff. Note that does not work in PvP, and power will no longer function in PvP come, a, uh, come update 35, so be aware of that going forward. Now, uh, Trial Sets, Mantle of Sioria, basically what happened here is is they reduce the um, set's cooldown by two seconds to help it be a little bit more mobile. You're also going to get more damage out of it, and the four piece actually is going to be replaced with weapon damage instead of mana. I think that's probably better for the set itself, so I mean it depends on where you really feel on it. Now, uh, other than that, we're going to get some furnishing things fixed here and there, as well as, you know, fixing a crash that would occur when holding down input when logging in. So, 
overall, we're looking at some good changes here in the next patch. I think I think that we should be hesitant going in uh, because we're not quite sure what's going to be going on with some of our builds are going to have to change, right? A lot of our builds are going to have to change. Me specifically, I will have to change so many of my builds that when it's time to do this, you know, we're all going to have to really, like figure out what's the best thing and that is what we'll be here doing on spy pie gaming tv so if you like the kind of content we're doing here click the like button down below press subscribe leave a comment check out our other pages such as twitter you know we have a reddit page we have a tiktok page we also have a patreon if you would like to directly support the channel that is the best way of doing so as well as there is private uh specialized content on there for people who decide that they want to donate to the channel, as well as if you would, on another way, like to donate, there is a thank you button down below, and we have merch for Spy Pie Gaming TV. I would like to thank you all for watching. This is, once again, Spy Pie Gaming TV. I am Spy, and I will see you all in the next video.